All right. Uh, welcome everyone to this new camp campfire show. Uh, it's Friday, so it's campfire day. Uh, we're back since last week from uh, a break during the the summer, and today is very special uh, because uh, we have Leo Vega with us. Hi, Leo. How are you Hello. doing? Good. And and what's very special is Leo is not a student of New Camp or an instructor or a graduate. Uh, and so Leo is going to bring us a very um, interesting perspective on the industry and, and how actually uh, students with diverse background and not traditional, I would say, educational path can get a job. Uh, but Leo, please introduce yourself and, uh, and who you work for uh, very briefly, because we'll get into that in, in a lot of details. But if you don't mind just introducing yourself, uh, your background, uh, that will be awesome. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ludo. Uh, my name is Cecilio Vega. I go by Leo. I'm a customer success associate with Opportunity at Work. Um, specifically, I work very directly with our talent marketplace called Stellarworks. Um, so a little about me, um, and I'm, I'm just kind of almost honing in because I saw the Silver Surfer art in the background for you. So I'm yeah. like, yay, fellow nerd. Um, <laughs> the uh, massive nerd, if it wasn't obvious with the giant collection of Funko Pops behind me or the racing chair or... yes. You know, the, the, the many things that are a dead giveaway, probably. Um, you know what? I, I had, I had a, a gaming chair as well, and I decided to trade it because I was like, that doesn't look too serious for me. And so, but I, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't own it. I couldn't own the, the, <laughs> the gaming chair myself. It's, you know, it's you more ergonomics at a certain point than anything else, man. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I do less gaming in this chair than I do anything else, probably. <laughs> um, I'm uh, based out of New York, so uh, it's towards the evening for me over here. Um, really, really excited to talk. Like you, like, like you said, I don't want to get too too deep into the details because it's funny that we're going to go. All over right. The next hour. Well, we are very excited to have you here. Um, and needless to say, the reason why you're here is because we are partnering together to really bring your comp your organization, and the platform that you've created uh, to our graduates, so that they can find a job um, in in the industry. Just a quick reminder for anyone who's joining, uh, you probably know we're live on YouTube, we're live on LinkedIn, and we're live on Facebook. And you have a chat right here. Mikal is here uh, where you can ask your questions. And so, Mikal, great to have you with us. Um, thanks for joining. And there's a little something that I thought I would be copied by other YouTubers, but I don't think many have done what I'm doing right now with this which is if you follow this link right here, url.newcamp.co slash dial in, you actually can get right here where we are with Leo and with your mic and video on, uh, have a conversation with us live on the show, live uh, streamed on those three platforms. So please do that if you want. Uh, but if you would rather ask your questions, please do so as well. Hey, Drew, great to see you. So Leo, you're... You're working for an organization, uh, Opportunity at Work, that has a very strong uh, purpose and mission. Uh, can you tell us what it is? What I mean, why was Opportunity at Work uh, created and founded? What's your mission? So our mission is to do what we call rewire the labor market. Um, our primary focus are individuals called STARS. So those are people that are skilled through alternative routes. Those are the same individuals that you see from uh, you know, graduating from a new camp, graduating from a year up, an Empower, a lot of different um, training programs, boot camps, workforce development programs across the country that historically are overlooked when it comes to a lot of job opportunities because they do not have four-year degrees. Where as an organization working across the country, working with various employers to remove those degree requirements from their job postings to give you know an equal playing field to the stars that are actually applying for these roles because we don't want the only thing that's really getting in their way to be these degrees when they have the skills they have a lot of the times also the experience and the transferable skills from previous roles to knock these jobs out of the park and there's no reason why simply for them not sitting through a classroom for four years they shouldn't be able to entitled to the same roles for the same pay as well yeah, that makes sense. That makes a ton of sense. Let me paste the URL to the website right here. And you mentioned STAR, STARS. It's an acronym, and I find it really interesting. 
can you tell tell us again what it stands for? What what does STARS stand for as an acronym? Yep. So STARS are those that are skilled through alternative routes. So that's anyone. Generally, we focus on folks that are above the age of 25 and older. Anyone under that is considered to be a rising star. Um, but anyone that is skilled through alternative routes and does not have a four-year degree. That makes no, that's great. And um, it's interesting. We have Rose here with us. Hi, thanks for being here. And then Rose, I work with her. That's my manager. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi, Rose. That's cool. Um, and then we have Matt here, 21 Day Survival. That sounds like a video game or a movie, I think. Um, new student, hey, good to have you. And then a LinkedIn user just graduated in August and found a developer, developer job without a degree. It is possible. Congrats. That's uh, very much, uh, I'd like to know if it was with the help of the, your organization. Uh, but yeah, indeed. There you go. And so stars. All right. So can you can you tell me a little bit about um, the genesis of this organization and maybe talk about a little bit your, your founder. Uh, I was um, I had the chance to browse through the website and I was really impressed with how it actually all started uh, and the background of your founder. And, and uh, I'd love to know like if you can share a little bit with us on, on this. Yes. Um, so Byron um, is uh, big on making sure that we get as many opportunities as possible from just anywhere. Um, he's one of the co-founders of Opportunity at Work. Um, started, I want to say, back in 2015. I've been there yeah. for a little over a year myself now. Um, he has a really, really strong foundation in politics in that he you know, worked within the White House itself, um, acted as a deputy assistant at one point. Um, he's, he's, he's been ingrained in, I want to say, a lot of the, the places where policies should be trickling down to kind of create and instigate the level of change that we need in a lot of these organizations. Um, part of, I think, the driving factor with Byron creating this organization is seeing that there was a systematic, you know, difference when it came to those that were really strongly affected by these degree requirements. Because as, you know, as much as it is, you know, individuals that may not necessarily just have wanted to go through college. It, a lot of the times, systemically, it tends to face individuals of color, people of color coming from different backgrounds that do not have the opportunity, be it you know, because of finances or be it some other type of financial um, situation or opportunity situation to actually go through a four-year school because they need to start you know, working sooner or they need to do something along those lines as well. So there's a multifaceted background between him and Shad and when it comes to kind of creating opportunity at work and really setting up a lot of these uh, systems that we're trying to put into place now as well. Yeah, that was really interesting to see. Uh, I think there are pictures of Brian uh, in the White House uh, Oval Office with Obama at the time. Um, so I mean, really gave a lot of um, interesting insights into his, his, his background and, and how he got where, where he is right now at the opportunity at work. So let's let's talk about you now uh, i would really love to hear your story and and your uh journey into what you're doing right now and because you've been in that in the space of helping others i mean if i look at your linkedin profile i mean since the beginning uh you worked at europe um back i mean when did you start that you you'll tell me actually but tell me about how did you get into that field and what led you to really spend the majority of your career so far really working on helping others you know achieve the, the jobs that they want to achieve so um i am what on paper anyone would consider to be a college dropout when you, you know, look at the fact that you know, I, I attended kingsborough didn't complete never went back on paper cut and dry college dropout oh he, he doesn't have anything going for him yeah. but in that same way i'm I am myself a star. I am. I uh, when I stopped attending college, uh, enrolled in Europe myself back in 2012. Oh, that's awesome. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah. graduated. Uh, you know, a year later, by the nature of the of the the company, um, 
went through various roles um, that are project based, service management based, and then uh, eventually landed back at actually working at Europe myself, um, building curriculum, moved into a place of actually being an instructor there, and then even doing some instructional design down the line as well. Um, I'm extremely passionate about the notion of giving folks a fair shot for the work that they put into something. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm far from the individual that's going to sit there and be like, I'm anti-college. Like I, I even say that on webinars I do with, uh, with new enrolling candidates for StellarWorks. I'm like, if you have a four-year degree, StellarWorks, not for you, mm -hmm. but good on you. You have an opportunity that a lot of individuals may not necessarily have so implicitly. I am for the people who college isn't for. No, not everybody wants to go through four years of college. Not everybody has an industry that they're interested in where a four-year degree may even be particularly useful. Yeah. Where, you know, having the experience go um, when it comes to software development or it comes to building your own sites, building uh, software for other little startups um, before you move into a larger organization might have more viability for your long-term success versus coming out of a four-year school and then trying to go straight into the same role. So... A big reason for my passion and why I, you know, eventually even found my my way to opportunity at work and doing customer success and working so closely now with stars and employers to um, really change the way that they think about the talent that they would have normally overlooked is because I myself am a star. I want to make sure that people aren't going through the same thing that I went through for ten years trying to get roles that they have absolutely no business being denied for simply yeah. because they didn't attend school for four years and graduate. And so can, can you share how, how you think or how your organization believe we're successful in changing that mindset? Um, I mean, I know some big tech companies are going to announce that they're, they're starting to remove the degree requirement. You know, sometimes it makes, it makes the headline, but, in general and, and across America, I will say, how, where are we on that journey of transforming how people look at, you know, those college dropouts or look at those individuals who've chosen a different education path? Um, are we at the beginning of it? Are we near the end? What What's more to do in that space to really make it uh, possible for folks to not just have to go to college to prove their worth? I definitely think we have made a lot more headway compared to where we would have been somewhere like 20 years ago. You have organizations like Europe that have literally been around for 20 years already have been where their, their core demographic that they serve were individuals who did not have four year degrees that were moving into, you know, fortune 500 companies and getting paid the same as, as entry level of any, anyone else going into those roles, which for those companies is not a small amount. The work that we're even doing with Opportunity at Work, it's not as difficult of a conversation a lot of the times with the employers that we're working with or with the employers that our, you know, our acquisition team works with and reaches out to, to really convince them and to really have them buy into this notion that, you know what, there is so much more talent out there. And that's something that we, you know, we see on a, on a weekly basis, even on LinkedIn, where like, oh yeah, there's a, there's a uh, skill shortage or there's a, a, there's a labor shortage. I'm like, no, you guys are just not looking in the right places at a certain point, or people are getting scared off because you have this, this number four on your, your job requirement. I, I, I can't think of how many jobs I didn't apply for simply because I saw that on the actual application. And that's an automatic turnoff. I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to waste their time or mine. But I think that we are in such a better place now because even the, the term stars is something that has been picking up and has been catching on. It's a phrase that a year ago I would have never heard before I started working here, but I've seen that just be used casually on LinkedIn with people I'm not even connected with. And it excites me because those are the same people that are, are in all of these different organizations that either they have their own foot in the door and they themselves are a star, or they are working with those HR departments. They're working with individuals who can actually enact the changes that we need to get more opportunities created for individuals like myself. Uh, that's pretty cool. I want to share the screen, actually, my screen. 
because there, there's a few things, and I would encourage you know the audience to go check out the website because there's a few things that are really inspirational here. Um, so I'm on your profile here, but then if I go to your to opportunity at work uh, and visit the website, you have a ton of really impactful partners. Um, I mean, uh, Google, Center for in Inclusive Growth, Microsoft, Walmart, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Comcast. These are really heavy hitting partners that I'm sure are going to help, you know, bring that notion that, hey, you don't need necessarily a four year degree to apply. Um, so that's that's very much a testimonial of how you know that movement is taking roots and and growing in the US. Um, yeah, I mean, I really will encourage anyone to just have a look to the website. Um, I think there's a question here somewhere. Where did I see that? Oh, oh no, that's that's a comment more than a question. Um, <laughs> you're inspiring, Leo, and there may have. Uh, so, Ron, what which question do you want us to answer? We'll be very happy to uh, to answer it. Um, and Krista, Krista has been a student for a while at New Camp. Uh, never misses an opportunity to join our shows, uh, which I really appreciate. Thank you, Krista. But yeah, that's uh, a great statement. Um, yeah. What I'm seeing sometimes as well. And, and I don't know if it's an, if there's an easy, easy solution to that, uh, are students who will have gone the wrong path doing a college degree and will have received you know, a, a degree not in a field that actually they want to pursue or not in a field that is really giving them a ton of opportunities to find an actual job. And then they actually yeah. they change routes, they join a coding boot camp, but then they find out themselves pretty much in it, eligible non-eligible to all the programs that are going to help people with no degree. And so they're like, but I don't have a degree in computer science. I have a degree in blah, which means nothing pretty much. And they will have also, you know, student debt. Uh, how do you, I mean, do you, do you see that happening as well? And what's, what's the solution for those people who kind of make the wrong choice, accumulated, accumulated debt doing that? And then are kind of in between, you know, two worlds. Yeah, I, I think you actually hit the nail on the head in terms of how I would describe that. It's a weird gray area to kind of live in because there are not individuals who are considered to be college dropouts. They are considered, they are even considered by our, in our own definition, not to be considered stars because yeah. they have a four-year degree, even though they changed industries. And that's a common conversation that we uh, that we run into with. Um, individuals that even try to join some of the webinars and they're like, oh, well, I have, you know, I have a degree in 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 uh, liberal arts. And I'm like, if you have a four year degree in liberal arts, you probably still have a better chance applying for a role somewhere versus yeah. someone who doesn't have a job at all. Because nine times out of 10, that job description doesn't even say what kind of degree they want. It mm -hmm. just says four year degree. And that's it. Yeah. That's, their, that's their cutoff. Um, what I would say to those individuals is. Be as true to yourself as you need to be when it comes to this applica the application processes themselves. If you are applying for a role, if you're applying for a boot camp, you're applying for the levels of help that you need, you need to do the work that you need to do in order to actually get accepted into these programs sometimes. With that being said, recognize that in having that four-year degree in your back pocket, even if it's an industry that you think is completely irrelevant to what you do, I guarantee if Anyone jumps into chat right now and tells me about a four-year degree that they have, but then they went to, you know, uh, they went to New Camp instead and graduated. I can speak to at least five transferable skills from that previous degree that yeah. you have that's going to help you in a coding role, or help you in a, on a software team or an agile, or, or if you're, you become a part of some some crazy development team. There's always going to be some level of transferable skills. So just in the same way that seeing a four-year degree might discourage me from applying for a role. Don't think that because they're asking for you for your degree in some other field entirely, you have that experience with the boot camp. You can speak to your own skills when you get to that interview process. 
also still showed that you have the dedication and you have the discipline to sit through for a four year degree. And that's going to shine through for them as well. Yeah, that's a good point. So it's it's it doesn't have to be looked at as a handicap. It's it's not a handicap. It should not be a handicap. And you can actually present yourself, you know, with that four year degree experience and the new path that you're taking and, and all of that really um, would, would have a, a, a grander amount of value. Um, Ron apparently really wants to ask a question. Uh, go for it. Type it in. Uh, or join us uh, via the link to actually join us live. Let me check another question. And Krista, apparently, um, exactly your path, what you're doing here, what, you're, what you've experienced is you have a degree, but not in computer science. Uh, let's see what else. Omar, instructor role. We have some international students, by the I way. Know. I was um, talking to Krista about that, uh, Christy about that yesterday. You guys have oh, so yeah. many just everywhere. I was like, that's so dope. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Caesar is a is an instructor with us. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like you want to make sure, like you got to make every dollar that you spent or have to eventually spend on something that you did ten years ago count. In some way, shape, or form. So make sure you're still you're you're, you're wearing that proudly because that's an accomplishment. Exactly. Even if you don't, if it, if you think it's not applicable in your immediate work, it still counts. You know. Um, so I have a question with for you as well regarding you know student loan, student debt. I mean, it's in the news right now. Obviously, there's been a, a huge announcements made in that space. It's it's kind of for me it feels bittersweet, right? Um, great news that we're finding solutions for those in debt, but it's not really necessarily solving the problem. How how do you and how does the Opportunity at Work organization think about that that student debt problem? Are you involved in you know groups that think about what's the what's the long term solution of that? Uh, uh, it cannot just be you know um, every. 10 years uh, expunging the debt of the debt of everyone how do you do you have yeah do you have a, your own thoughts or your organization thoughts on what's the actual solution to the student loan or student debt problem so i'll speak in the eye for this um we're one of the few what's considered to be advanced countries or considered to be modernized or what have you western civilization that is charging people who are living 15 minutes away from their college to go to that college. And that's just across the board. There's no getting around it. We, you incur debt simply because you want to live a fruitful life down the line. And there's individuals like, and it's, it's honestly gets into what we just discussed. The average college student changes majors five times. If that major is changing five times and they've already oh, yeah, sunk no, money yeah, and if they've already signed, that's that's years ago. I got to imagine it's even more now. If they're changing majors five times and they're incurring debt for each of those prerequisites that don't necessarily count anymore now, but they still have to pay for those classes, all they're doing is just kind of feeding into a larger system that has bigger issues in itself. I think that if I can't speak to like highly private schools and you know they're going to do what they want to do regardless in terms of how they charge tuition and, and sure any government regulation can try to go into that. But at the very least, when we're talking about city and state colleges, those type of universities, I don't think that there's any reason why that's not something that can just be paid for through no, purely through tax money to make sure that individuals just have that chance to actually succeed. Yeah. With that being said, in that same way, for those, in, those individuals who do not decide to go the route of college, should still be, you know, garnering some type of benefit, you know, be it through a subsidy or something like that to be able to attend a boot camp like a new camp or, or, you know, empower or anything like that, that may not necessarily be a pro bono boot camp, something that they have to pay a tuition for or pay a tuition back to down the line, they should be entitled to the same kind of loans that someone that's going through college might have to take up as well. Um, with regards to the forgiveness bit itself, I've, I've heard so many folks get really, really upset. And it's always weird to me to hear how upset they get about oh, other yeah. people that's being paid off. And mm -hmm. I'm like, do you like your streets being sweeped when you're in New York? 
<laughs> that also comes out for your taxes. I don't understand why this is an issue for you now. <gasps> like, even if you don't own a car, you live in New York, you take the subway, but you pay for the street sweepers. I don't, there's, there's, it's a non-argument at a certain when it comes to a lot of those things. Um, I think specifically, though, when it comes to colleges, one, I'd like to see. I'd like to see more variety when it comes to a lot of those kind of localized schools, like something like boot camps like yours, um, the work that that Europe does, um, which Europe already you know started doing even years ago with, with their own um, PTC program and, yeah. and really introducing Europe programming directly into associate's degree programs. Um, seeing a lot more things impact directly to individuals in college because it's not always just about the training and the things that they're learning for the hard skills. It's also about the soft skills that they're going to learn. And a lot of individuals coming out of these colleges don't have the soft skills to succeed when it comes to a lot of work that they're doing also and that career yeah. readiness that they need as well. No, that makes sense. Um, l- let me, let me check again. Uh, so we have oh, Omar. Yeah. Omar is with Omar is actually from uh Cairo, but an instructor of ours. Um, Okay, I'm going to take that question because this is, uh, after all, uh, a, a stream from a coding bootcamp, and I'm guessing you're one of our students, Albert. Um, so if you can only choose three, four projects for your portfolio, what would they be? Albert, I'll tell you, you should pick something that you're deeply interested in. Um, if you work, if your past industry uh, is not you know, tech, I would say pick a project that relates to your current or past industry because chances are you're going to have intelligence or or knowledge about what needs to be fixed. And that's going to be a great motivation for you to invest time and energy to produce something that is going to be meaningful to your experience. And you're going to be able to speak about very proudly and and with a lot of knowledge. Uh, And that's going to impress. The more you can be perceived as eloquent, knowledgeable, uh, that you know what you're doing and you know why you fix that, uh, that you have the data to back it up, that's going to be as very powerful versus, you know, reproducing another tic-tac-toe or uh, or to-do list. Uh, that won't have that much weight at all. It's like, yeah, you made you made Tappy Bird. Yeah. That's that's great. <laughs> what is the methodology behind that? What yeah. is what did, what did it take you to get there? You got the biggest thing when it comes to a lot of these interviews especially if they're taking a look at your portfolio is they want to know why you yes. did this and beyond why you did this, how you did this. So you That's have right. to know Albert, how to actually explain the work that you're doing. It's always great to be able to show it, but if you can't actually explain it, mm-hmm. that's they, they're not going to have the confidence to hire you. That's right. Exactly. So Ron just shared this. I don't know exactly what it means. Maybe you can help me figure it out, but um, no high school, but 30 management career, I, I would think. Um, and the question is, I'm guessing, you know, what? where do we go from here? And oh, I keep hitting that thing here. Hold on. Um, do you know what hearing any G option is? Does that ring a bell to you, Leo? No. All right. Not sure. And yes, Albert is, okay, Albert is a full stack student. Um, all right, I want to switch gears a little bit and, and talk about the people that you've seen co- go through and being helped by opportunity at work. Uh, well, very open question. Can you tell us more about you know the audience that you're serving? Uh, where are they coming from? Maybe if you have a, a, an example in mind of someone that recently you know went through the program uh we'd love to hear that so for clarity's sake um opportunity at work itself isn't a a program we're not like as an organization it's more about you know policy change working with organizations to change what they how they view talent Mm -hmm. um the platform that i help to power is called stella work so that's the talent marketplace where um you know new camp graduates graduates from other partnerships that we work with other talent developers, um, their, their graduates would join into this uh, marketplace, can look into different roles that are being posted by our employer partners and 
all of those roles that are being posted have no four year degree requirements. And that's the agreement that comes, you know, they, they come into it with it when they sign up for Stellworks themselves is if you are going to be posting a job on our platform, it cannot have a four year de a degree requirement. You have to be open to hiring stars. Um, a really, really great example that I can think of actually is um, I had an individual, um, it's leaving me what actual training program she went to. I want to say she was either Coding Dojo or Sabio, but she had been applying for roles for months, I want to say, um, on our platform, different ones that came up, got interviewed for a couple um, between uh, COVID and relocation. There's various different reasons why she didn't land something right away. She made such an impact uh, through the application process, through the interview process with one of our um, with one of our, our recruitment agency partners that she was basically scouted for a role that didn't even post on StellarWorks initially. <laughs> she, she got kept in mind, reached out to directly. They had, they handled everything on their own. And then they let us know afterward, Hey, we hired her for X, Y, and Z role. We're going to go ahead and post this role because we would not have even known that she existed. Had she not been a, a member of StellarWorks herself as well. Yeah. Um, and that just kind of goes to show, um, and this is particularly important for those of you that are dialed in via LinkedIn, networking is really, really important. Yes. <laughs> like so much of what we do as an organization is grounded in us, our previous professional networks that we built up over years of the work that we're doing and everyone having the passions that we're doing and then reaching out to those places that we either worked, for, uh, worked with before worked for before, wanted to work with before and saying, Hey, are you open to better options when it comes to your recruiting process? Are you open to, you know, having more of a talent pool to actually select for and not just going, like you said, what we consider to be that traditional route of hiring. So we see a lot of that kind of organic uh, growth happening when it comes to those individuals that are on StellarWorks. We have, you know, some some of our, our our talent developer partners almost act as direct pipelines for some of the employers that we work with. When it comes to you know the minute they post a role, they they'll go straight to asking for uh, you know a year up alum or a Sabio alum or something like that. And I'm expecting honestly the exact same thing to happen with a lot of new camp alum once we start getting those numbers up because you have really strong talent from what I've seen. Um, so. That's like the success has just been such a nice organic thing because it, it doesn't feel like the work that's getting done is transactional. It's that's a true, very yeah. human element. It's a very, you know, the fact that we're here having this kind of conversation, I'm talking directly with you, is a very human element compared to what you might see in recruiting traditionally or even you know, through yeah. staffing agencies. Traditionally. It's not like applying on Indeed or anything like that. Yeah, you're I not just jump. signing a resume. <laughs> yeah, I want to jump on something you just said because I keep hammering at it and it's so important that networking is essential to be an artist and to actually find your way to the job that you want. I actually want to add a little bit to that. Networking can take a lot of different forms. And of course, there's a very traditional go-to meetings, um, uh, engage in conversations. Uh, and one, of course, in the post-COVID, or I mean, when we were in COVID or post-COVID world is be active in communities yep. and show yourself, chat with others. And I want to give a, a short example here. I know, for example, me as, as a potential, if you want, hiring manager, I've noticed Krista because she's been engaging in the community and I speak and I'm not okay. I know who Krista is. I, I don't know her very much, but I connected in my mind. I have an affinity now. And if tomorrow we have a position and Krista applies, I'm gonna, like, hey, I know Krista. Yeah. I know, I know hologram. I know hologram because I watched Down the Developer Show and I know hologram is watching the show because he's engaging that community. And so I have I have a mental connection. Uh, I know Brad who used to be a policeman who studied as a student with us, but was a very active student, was very pretty much engaged in conversations. That's it. Like we never really talked, but Brad then became an instructor and now has a job and he's been on the show. But there's that notion that just showing up, just, you know, engaging 
in a community just by chatting, just by being there, you are already without knowing potentially being noticed. Um, because a good manager, a good you know CEO, a good leader is always going to look for talent and you never stop looking for talent. Like you always have an eye for that, right? And so I'll just say that's so important that your, your platform that you're describing is, is, is really helping with that. I mean, that example for me means a lot. Because again, it's not just sending your resume to into the, the hat and uh, in a completely anonymous way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I am uh, I'm living proof that networking works. I yeah. the only job I've had, and you can see it on my LinkedIn profile, the only job that I've had over the last 10 years that wasn't through someone referring me was working for the MTA because I took that exam seven years before that. Yeah. My mom forced me to. <laughs> Every job I've had since graduating Europe has been a referral, has been someone reaching out to me to say, hey, we heard about this opportunity, has been, I visited an office once to say hi to people that I used to work next to, not even for, and then two weeks later, they called me back with a job offer for a role there because, oh my God, we were looking for somebody and then you showed up. Yeah. Networking is so ridiculously important. Like my, my, my business communications instructor when I was a student at Europe was my manager when I graduated. I mean, when I, not when I graduated, excuse me, when I started working as an instructor there, yeah. she was my manager. So like it, it comes full circle in so many different ways. So it makes like, everything, I, everything is so easy. Yeah. Um, makes, there's yeah. a ton of questions. So we're going to go back in time and I want to, I want to try to answer some difficult questions that we've had. Um, uh, and what does networking practically look like? Well, I think we just covered that, but let's me, let me go back. So Ron, Okay, Ron pretty much is sharing with us that he's 65 and he's wondering if there's if there's a path for him um, to actually get into programming and taking the coding bootcamp. Um, that's a tough one because it it is going to be harder. Like, I, I don't think, you know, you cannot really sugarcoat it. It is going to be uh, harder. But I always want to talk about... Um, a graduate of ours who actually was exactly in that situation, Ron. And let me actually see if I can show it here. And let me see if I can find it again. Um, hold on. No. Ah, uh, dang. Okay. I'm going to have, hold on. Uh, Job.com's graduate service. Okay, maybe I'm not gonna be able to find it. Hold on a sec. Let's go to free. There we go. Laurie. So for you, Ron, I will encourage you to read about Laurie Hafelt. Uh, she actually was on this show, Campfire. Uh, I think it was probably the, the number of five or six. Uh, and she has a very inspiring story on how actually she got into coding. Um, at an age that was, I think, very similar to yours. Uh, let me copy and paste that into the chat. So I don't know that, I mean, it's not an insurance. It's not, you know, I'm not going to say, yeah, you're, it's going to be easy, no problem. You're going to be able to do it. Um, but but there's proof that some people have done it. Uh, and so I will not give up. What What is your take, uh, Leo? On, and do you see actually people uh, that are, maybe closer to the retirement age, uh, actually be successful in fighting, you know, a second, uh, second wind, uh, I would say in, uh, in fighting a, another path. Yeah. I, that definitely is a thing. Um, and Ron speaking to you directly in this too, when you're applying for these roles, you're not, you're not your age. You are your skill set. You are the experience that you have. If they put two and two together because they read through what I'm assuming is to be a nice padded resume, good for them. They're going to see just how much work you've been putting in and how much great experience that you bring to the table as well. The competitiveness and the any no's that you might hear aren't always going to be grounded in, in your age. A lot of the times it's it's a lot of the times those exact kind of stigmas of, you know, oh, this is somebody who you know, didn't just graduate college or hasn't graduated college potentially. I don't know your specific story, Ron, obviously. The best that you can do and the most that you can do is to keep 
pushing on because there is going to be somebody out there eventually who does give you that opportunity, who does give you that shot. And it's not going to be out of pity. It's not going to be out of making a quota. It's going to be because they recognize what you bring to the table. If you were doing management for that many years and then you're joining a role at a certain point, somebody's going to say, Hey, this person knows how to work on a team. They know how to run a team potentially. Maybe their coding skills, they're, they're fresh, but they'll be at a certain point actually be able to run this development cycle and get us to a good place when it comes to the product that we're building out. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. And then we have Hologram asking about 40. And I will say directly to you, Hologram, 40 is young. You are super young. Don't, stre don't sweat. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> um, and I know some, I mean, I know you will, you will think that, hey, um, it's probably because you have you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years of of, uh, of of experience doing something else and uh, and it may, be, may feel more challenging to actually switch it around. But uh, what would you say, uh, Leo, to Hologram, who's 40? And um, I don't know what your situation is, Hologram, if you found a job in IT or not, or tech, not yet. I mean, let us know. But what, what would you say to him? It's very, very mirroring to what I said to Ron, probably even more so because the shift of change is not going to might not feel as drastic that Ron might be feeling from, you know, the, the, the many more years of, of just kind of being in different industry, but because you've lived through so many different evolving industries and evolving uh, tech, even over the last couple of years, having that newly peaked interest might even benefit you because they're going to see, Oh, this person is doing a career change. Let's look at the last 10 years that they did before they actually got into IT yeah. or before they actually got into software. What can we gain from this individual joining our organization? The biggest, I would say age is definitely not going to be the biggest obstacle. The biggest obstacle for most folks when it comes to looking for a job is looking for a job. It's an oversaturated market that pretends there aren't enough people applying. <laughs> and they discount people. They, they, they'll, you'll get automatic no's. I've, I've literally applied for a role and five minutes later got a robotic email saying no. Yeah. Yeah. And I could not fathom how that was possible, but it happened yeah. on more than one occasion. You just kind of have, you got to keep pushing through for it and you got to start looking at the right organization, start looking at data and any insights that a lot of these organizations might even be posting about their own demographics or about their own hiring practices mm -hmm. and see where you are more likely to be able to get your so that you're not continuously hitting those barriers. You're working and you're reaching out to organizations that maybe they have an, a specific endeavor. You know, we have some that some organizations have specific endeavors to work with veterans or to work with individ, individuals mm -hmm. who are changing industries, who are coming from certain backgrounds or certain communities. And it's not just them trying to meet quotas. It's them legitimately caring about these communities that they're trying to build up. Look for those organizations that fit you. It's not always necessarily about you fitting in with them. It's about them fitting in with you. That interview process is is two ways. Yeah. What what we um we also uh, um, tell our graduates is your past industry is your superpower. Like mm -hmm. if you were in you know working in uh, um, uh, uh, automotive, right? For example, if get a, try to find a job in the IT department of you know a manufacturer yep. because you have the knowledge you you were uh, uh, you are an employee maybe on the supply chain uh but and then you know you can bring all that knowledge to them you have that domain uh, experience yep that's right uh we have ron joining us ron we've been talking about you if you have your mic working and your video working i think your video is working we're gonna bring you over um let's actually do it now and then i will want to uh, try to answer oh no ron I don't know what is working. So let's actually, I don't know. I'm not sure it's working. Let's see. Let's see if we can bring on Ron. Hey, Ron, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Ron? No, I don't think it's working. Can you see us or hear us? All right, maybe maybe another time, Ron. Uh, maybe we, we stick to um, to the chat. Uh, let's Let's actually talk about, this question uh, from Albert, it's um, it's a twist. It's that was... I, and I wanted to talk about it. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad that you brought it's that up. Well. Yeah, if it's not four-year degree, it's going to be that many years of experience. Um, 
and and I know I know uh, aspiring developers and people who just graduate they are very much intimidated by those requirements, right? I'm like, hey, well, I mean, it's a junior position. Why do you ask for two years experience? Um, what's your take on that? I mean, how how do you handle those all those job postings that actually fit you perfectly? You know, if it wasn't for those two years experience. Um, it, 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 it becomes the golden question that, that I bring up constantly in my own organization, even of what is an entry level job? Yeah. What does that even mean at a certain yeah. point? And Albert speaking directly to you and speaking to anyone else that would have the same exact question, always apply. I apply for it. If you can do the job and you know, you can do the job. If it's asked for four year degree, uh, four years of experience, apply for the role. The caveat that I'm always going to say, and this gets back into our entire networking piece. If you are applying for that job, knowing that something on paper can disqualify you from the running, find out how you can reach out to that hiring team. Yeah. Find out how you can message an HR person or the recruiter, the hiring manager, somebody connect with somebody on LinkedIn even and say, hey, I just applied for this role. I have interest. I want to set up some time to talk about it a little bit. And don't even mention, you know, the lack of the two years experience, but put yourself in front of them, make your name known enough so that they just push you through and say, Hey, this person, maybe they don't have the core requirements, but their cover letter was really good. Or maybe their portfolio was amazing. And they made it a point of reaching out to me. They did that social portion of it because again, you know, we're all at a certain point, we're all nerds in a basement when it comes to a lot of our tech and software stuff. Like this is the highest up in the most brightly lit room I've ever experience my entire life. I've lived, literally lived in the basement most of my life. I would still do all I can to be social if it means it being yeah. a part of a team that I with work that I actually want to do. So if you see something that is going to potentially be what you consider to be a down for you, because that question in itself, I can tell you, Albert, that you're saying two years experience. It's saying two years experience in a software development uh, uh, environment. Cool. But if you can tell me about two years, a years of experience that you've done on a team, when it came to skill building, when it came to uh, building some type of product, even if it isn't software, you're speaking to transferable skills that are still applicable to the work that needs to get done. The only difference is, is that you weren't using Java, you weren't using JavaScript, you weren't using Ruby, you weren't using one of these actual coding languages, but you were still building something. You were still working on a team, you were still developing. That's right. And incre so increase your chances of, you know, bypassing that requirement by, you know, again, having that social approach to it. Um, and, and just, you know, a, a couple of exchanges on LinkedIn, you know, you send a message, it's a very personal message. Maybe the hiring manager or someone who works there replies. That could just do the trick. That could just be it. Uh, some companies hold um, hiring days, you know, like they have a, a hiring fair. Go there, show yourself. Say, hey, I just applied, and, and that could also help. Very true. All right, let's see what uh, what else we have. <laughs> yeah, not always for good. Okay. <laughs> um, Same. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am the troublemaker in most organizations that I go to. Exactly, Matt. Matt is so, I mean, yeah. Show yourself, Karakama, Slack, all these Discord servers, LinkedIn. I would say, show yourself a lot on LinkedIn. Um, look at the companies that you know are in your area. If you're if you're thinking that hey, you're going to find a job locally, look at you know what they're posting. Look at even the you know if they're doing advertising or just promotional posting, engage with those. I'm telling you, someone is reading those. Someone is going to read your answer, your answer, um, and that's that's always going to be uh, beneficial. And don't just focus on the big companies. Like if you're just coming yes. into the game, yeah. startups are looking for people that are hungry, that are willing to grow with them as well. Look for those, those small companies that are building up, obviously that pay the coin that you need, but look at those organizations as well, because one, you're going to be learning not only about, you know, what it means to be in a real live development team, but also what does it mean to be in a startup environment? Is that for you? Because 10 years from now, after you've been working in all these different, you know, potentially corporate roles, you might go into a startup and just be shell shocked because you, you've never experienced that before. You've gotten so used to this one specific way of working. Um, another social platform, and it, it sounds weird to say it, that 
you might be interested in, in actually doing that, especially being software, especially doing any of this kind of development, is looking at places like Twitch. Look at people who are using, who are building games and that they're posting about them building games using things like RPG Maker or using, um, doing Unity builds. People that are, are doing their work in game jams. They're looking for teams down the line after they've done their little independent work they're going to start looking to actually build up teams. And while that may not bring in all the money that you want in the world, that is experience that you can now put on your resume yeah. that you help somebody build up not only a video game, but maybe the website for that video game, maybe some of the marketing materials for that video game as well that you designed. Maybe you built, you helped them to build out an NFT. There's so many different lanes that you can find yourself in as a result of just that little touch point of saying hi on somebody's Switch channel. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Kayan is starting on Monday. We're looking forward to seeing you on, on our Slack channel, Kayan. Um, and great for sharing your, um, your, your journey and, and what you want to end up being. Uh, it's actually good to know that you know precisely what you want to do uh, once you finish the bootcamp, which is awesome. Helps a lot. Um, let me see what else we have here. Yeah, John, totally agree with you. Uh, Yep. A lot of times they just have to, they add that in because policy wise, they have to. Yes. Jerome, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And hologram is just starting the job hunt, uh, just polishing up the portfolio project. Well, good luck with that hologram. Uh, all right. It's all about how you word it. I so agree with that. You, you have to be able to, in a way, romance your experience and tell a story that's uh, interesting, that people will want to ask questions about, that's potentially surprising, that connects the dots between what you were doing before, what you're going to do next. And that takes practice. I mean, you, you know, and, and the, by the way, the, the two-minute elevator, elevator pitch is a real thing. You want to be able to tell that story real quick and, and really catch the attention of someone either in person or, you know, in a LinkedIn message. And when you're going to reach out to that person that you don't know, what are you going to write? That's not a novel. And that's going to catch someone's attention enough that they're going to spend the time to respond. Yeah. Um, yeah. How you word it is super important. Definitely. Um, interesting question uh, for you, Leo. If you actually are involved in that space as well, like, are you, how do you guys see freelancing as a path for someone, you know, starting pretty much on their own, being their own employer? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think it definitely really depends on what your focus is there. Um, speaking directly to you there, Dwight, um, I know when I was doing instructional design work in reaching out, you look at, you know, what does contract roles look like that they already have existing in these organizations, but then how do you also promote yourself? You know, are you are you promoting yourself on LinkedIn? Do you have a portfolio already in place for some of this work? Just the same way that you are trying to, you know, apply for a role and you want to get your your the work that you've already done in front of somebody, you still need that portfolio. It's just like anyone who's you know a photographer or something like that. I'm not going to want to hire you who's doing this work and working for yourself, unless I know that you do good work. Yeah. So being the business itself, it's twofold because you still sometimes have to secure a job because you're still going for that next paycheck. You're still trying to have a living wage. It's not always, you know, unless you once until you get to that point where people are directly reaching out to you, which again, that's your hat. That's post success. That's post networking. That's post, um, advertising or marketing yourself, not necessarily advertising in the, in the monetary sense, but like literally how are you, where is your work living that somebody can actually see you and find you. Um, but the biggest thing I'm always, like I said, I've harped on and I've said it already five times, even in this rant is how are you networking yourself? Because I, you know, I can do instructional design with my eyes closed. But if I don't have a portfolio in place to show work that I've done previously, nobody is going to want to bring me on for some of the jobs that they have. Yeah. And especially in the freelance world, I mean, you have to be able to network because that's going to be key to you finding your next customer. Yep. 
Um, I realize we're just five minutes away and we haven't really talked about the platform just yet. So let me check what we have. I, I do want to spend time on the actual platform and, and what it looks like to join it. Um, let me see. So I don't know if you'll be able to log in because I don't think you've been added in. So oh, <laughs> Yeah, I may not be able to do a demo, but that's okay. You can maybe do you, I don't know that you can share your screen. Do you have the share button? I have a share button. I don't know if the share button works. Um, what I... This and is what I'll go ahead that. and do. We didn't prep that, so I don't know if you're ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me let me talk it through because this is yeah. this is this is going to be a year's worth of of me doing it to see if I can just talk it through. At face value, when you log into um, when you log into Stellaworks as a new camp graduate, so those individuals that are logged in here that are you know been chatting with us. Once you've graduated, once you've gotten that invite from Christy and you, you, know, you sign up for the, you know, via the link that gets sent to your email, or a couple of weeks from now, we have a, a big endeavor actually going on called StellarWorks Anywhere, where we're going to kind of open that up for yes. folks to be able to sign up organically. So that because you've this, been, yeah, you've been invite only for a while, right? Christy was mentioning yeah, that. Yeah, we've been, now. we've been yeah. living in the beta for a while now, which um, for you know numerous reasons, we're going to be moving to, uh, we're going to be shifting to a point where, um, stars anywhere in the country as well as employers anywhere in the country are going to be able to sign up organically um talent developers because a lot of that has to do with working with the graduates and the alums directly we want to we want to be very particular and very specific still and we have a lot of partnerships already um that being said when it comes to stellarworks itself um at face value you're going to see it and you're going to okay cool this is it's another job board it's not the primary focus of Stellarworks is not your experience alone, but your skills. So your profile itself is going to be listing out every skill that you add to your profile, as well as any skill that's been attributed to you. And I have this PDF at least. I can yep. show some of that. But go, I mean, talk yes. over it. Continue. I'm just going to yep. scroll down the PDF if you don't mind oh, as, you, as you talk about it. Um, it's going to be uh, focused on your skills. So any skill that you add to your profile any skill that gets attributed to you from the courses that you've actually uh, undertaken at Lu uh, at, Ludo, at New Camp as well. Um, those are going to be skills that are considered verified skills. It's going to be visibly noted that that is a skill that you learned at this training boot camp. And it's something that the employers, when they look at your profile, when you're applying for these jobs, can actually see and say, hey, okay, cool. They're vouching for this individual. That gives me that even bigger vote of confidence than than I already had just by being on this platform and seeing all of these amazing skills. When you're applying for roles on Stellarworks, you'll actually see a match score that compares the skills that you have in your profile with the skills that the employers are asking for for the roles that they post, which is something that I've never seen anywhere else. Um, yeah. Even LinkedIn, you'll see like maybe you have like you have six of ten skills. This is asking for on your profile. We are hyper specific to the point of, you know, uh, we had a we have a brand new partnership with uh, Skyhive and the integration that they're doing with our skill based matchmaking. That's like, it's 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 in hyperdrive mode now. It's it's awesome. so good. It's learning how to actually read the job descriptions to a point um, where the skills matchmaking is a lot more accurate than it even was before, and it was on the money a year ago. So. I'm super, super excited to get to that. Point. Oh, if we, we, have, well. if we have more time, I would, I would go off. I have well. to. Yeah, and so if, you are, if you are a graduate of, of New Camp and you haven't received that invite, uh, ping us, uh, ping us, uh, uh, ping Christy, actually, Christy at newcamp.com. Shout to Christy. Um, I'm going to regret sharing that email live on YouTube, like in a few seconds. Uh, dang. Anyway, reach out. Uh, we'll send you the invite. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be available to all graduates. Uh, it's uh, I mean you've heard from Leo all the great work uh, that you guys are doing out there. Uh, it's a nonprofit uh, very, with a very strong social mission that matches so much and so well uh, what we're trying to do here at New Camp. Um, Leo, any parting words? Uh, any word of um, uh, wisdom or encouragement or how would you like to close this this stream? Um, I'll close it out the same way I would normally close it out with my own students. Every single person that is watching in, every person that's going to watch the, you know, the playback for this, you are 
in a better position than you were before you started this program. You're in a better position than you were 10 years ago, depending on age. You are doing what you need to do for your own success. Do not forget the reason that you started attending boot camp. Do not forget the drive that you have. If that's purely money, by all means, if it's to make a better life for you, better life for your family, keep that driving factor in mind. Keep that driving factor in mind when you will reach those obstacles when it comes to job placement or when it comes to you know, the interview process. But also speak to those things when you're in those positions as well. Make sure that when you get into these positions that you're also you know, lifting while you climb. Take a look back at individuals that are also going to be graduating and letting them know, hey, no, this is how this worked. Maintain an alumni network. Maintain and touch base with individuals that are still in the program and mentor them. Because we all needed that person at some point and we're where we are today because we didn't have that person. So yeah. become the person that you needed 10 years ago. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Leo. I think uh, I really, really enjoyed our conversation. Uh, I'm really excited about the partnership uh, that we have with you and your organization. Um, I wish you good luck. I maybe we should actually do it again. I don't know. I really, I really thought it was. I, a really I would great be against. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe in a few months, you know, uh, and talk about some success stories. Uh, that that could be awesome. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much again, uh, and uh, we'll see you next week. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Take care.